One of the biggest changes with Overwatch, and I want you guys to pay attention to this, and I firmly believe this to be true, is that in Overwatch 2, there are very, very few, if zero, hard counters left in the game. One thing about 5v5, so there's a couple of things that are changing with 5v5. If you haven't noticed already, the biggest change with 5v5, the two biggest changes with 5v5, and you guys are going to get like some secret big brain Overwatch League access here, kind of. The first one's obvious. All the tanks got buffed. So yes, there are there is only one tank, but every single tank has more HP. Every single tank has more flexibility. Almost all of them have more flexibility and more versatility. Uh, and they're a lot less reliant on being constantly pumped into healing. So not only do tanks take less damage, we'll get to the individual changes in a second, but they're more so they're they're, they're more flexible. They're more they're more um, independent. So you're less oh I need pumping heals and this. You are way, 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 so it's like, yes, there's one fewer tank, but all the tanks are stronger. All the tanks are stronger. Um, the other thing with the 5v5, and this is something that I, I think it's really important to discuss, is if you followed my macro strategy of Overwatch, okay? And if you followed the way I coach much at all, okay? We always talk about map control and angles, right? We talk about how tanks create space. So what's changed with Overwatch 2 is all the tanks have continually opportunities to create space. Arissa can shoot, walk forward without taking damage, the ball can slam, Doomfist can slam, bait attention, create space, can test high grounds. All the things can create space, right? Zarya can bubble a DPS at an angle. Uh, Zarya so can walk herself, beam people. But what has changed the most of Overwatch 2 is the fact that now you're significantly more reliant on your DPS creating space themselves. They are actually the space creators in Overwatch 2, as important or almost as important as your solo, solo tank because there's one fewer tank. It is unbelievable important that your, your DPS understand the control of angles and flanks because if they don't, they're gonna die over and over and over again to the enemy DPS taping angles. And the fact that, as you might have heard, because there's one fewer tank, and supports are a little squishier. They're, they're a little bit more fragile. Um, so if you're not actively denying the enemy team, the angles, the map control, your supports are gonna feel really squishy. The other thing that supports have to do now is it's even significantly worse to focus only on heal botting down main. So um, we'll just go, don't heal bot, right? So we talk about, you remember, everyone's talked about the plat on a play style, which is a little bit facetious, but it's, you know, you just pump your, your heels up your Reinhardt's bunt, nano them off of cooldown. That absolutely will not work. It's significantly weaker in Overwatch 2, because remember, with the amount of, the fewer tanks there are to swing on, Reinhardt has to create space in other ways. Reinhardt has to create space by controlling left and swinging right and fire striking this. And also because of the tank changes, the tanks need less healing as a whole. In fact, it's way more important for Ana what you're doing to heal your DPS. What shots are you landing on the enemy Tracer? What shots are you landing on the enemy Cassidy uh, to control those off angles? Senyata, we talked about the Zen Brig comp and how it's really good at controlling off angles. Well, now every support has to be thinking about that. If I'm playing Lucio, I can't just sit on Heal Song or even Speed Song and sit inside my Reinhardt. I got to go deny the high ground. I got to go look to boop this off. I have to go peel my backline off. You have to be way more involved as a DPS and a support in controlling the map because there's fewer tanks to control it for you. And so you can't indirectly help. You have to directly help and control space. Uh, it's significantly more important for you to be able to control space. The other thing in Overwatch 2 is that, especially in like higher ranks and really 100% in the pro level, Bunker, and by Bunker I don't mean Orisa Sigma Bastion, I just mean any composition that's immobile just trying to turtle on point, right? Like think like uh, Symmetra May, Ryan Diva. Let's say uh, Moira Lucio, Winston Diva, the five man dive, they just go to point and sit, you know, and build coal. Bunker is dead. Bunker is is dead one tank is not enough it is not enough you cannot simply just go to point as five and expect to live anymore it will not work against any team now am i being facetious for lower ranks mid ranks the average rank experience maybe yes but at any higher rank and even in lower ranks it's going to be weaker you might not understand why it's weaker but it's going to feel worse just standing behind rein shield and trying to survive against the pharmacy not gonna work not gonna work um so you have to be way more proactive as a DPS and support and controlling flanks and angles. Um, 
And obviously things like timing, we talked about this, planning, all this stuff. I told you guys this stuff is important. I told you that nothing would change. I told you this is not the fundamentals of Overwatch. These are the fundamentals of shooters and combat in general. And I was absolutely right. In fact, I was more right than I thought I would be because bunkering, which was the ignorance and ignoring of map control is significantly weaker than it was before. Tanks do create space that much, but they can't sit AFK without actively looking to contest angles. When you're talking about creating a space, we're talking about Doomfist diving a backline, Doomfist diving an angle, we're talking about D.Va contesting a high ground, we're talking about Zarya bubbling her DPS so that they can take angles, that they can take duels and win. We're talking about Reinhardt running at people and running at backline because he's impossible to kill now and doing and creating a space and creating attention, baiting attention. We're talking about Sigma doing the same old crap he was before, shielding off angles, taking those duels, same thing with Roadhog. There's actually not a lot changed with how tanks work. You just can't rely only on bunkering and turtling and not looking to actively proactively take space. Tanks absolutely have to take space. Tanks actually have to hold space. There's nothing changed with the fundamentals of tank. It's just more important that your DPS and supports know what they're doing as well. Heroes roll passives, we talked about this, 30% knockback resistance. All the tanks take less damage uh, in terms of like... Um, not less damage, less booping, less displacement. Um, lower ultimate generation for damage. In other words, when you heal a tank, you get less ultimate. When you damage a tank, you get less ultimate. I want you guys to think about this in terms of how we explain the macro, in terms of uh, how important those DPS duels on the flanks and angles are. Hard pocketing a tank isn't gonna even reward you with a very fast ultimate. In fact, it's discouraging just shooting enemy tank, healing my tank, her dirt. You actually, the, it's, you're rewarded a little bit more for controlling and enabling and pressuring DPS in your own tank line. Um, damage I'll move 10% faster. This is actually a, a change that you don't really, you don't notice a lot. Uh, it definitely has a small impact across the board, but it's not like, you know, meta defining really. Um, nano farming comps are dead. No, uh, this used to be 50% actually, instead of 30%. Um, so uh, it's not dead, no, um, but it's obviously a little weaker. Um, regenerate 15 health per second after one second without being damaged. So everybody knows Mercy's passive, right? Imagine Mercy's passive, but a little bit stronger. Uh, temporary shield and armor plus if you combine it over health with no special attributes. So in other words, if you like, I mean, actually, I, could, like, I can show you here. That is not armor. That is shields. Um, and if I'm Brig here, you get the same thing during Rally. You do not get armor. Listen, guys, you do not get armor during rally. You get over health, like Torb, or like uh, Ball Slam, essentially. Oh, armor reduces all damage by 30% now. So you guys remember armor, how it'd be like, if it's a bullet, it reduces each instance of damage by Fat 5, which means that it's more effective against Tracer and Beam Armor, and then the first splash damage is 120 per rocket, which means, like all that crappy calculation stuff, nothing. It's flat 30%. If you got armor, it's 30% reduction. Oh, you can't wraith out of uh, Graviton Surge or Graviton Flux. You cannot fade, Moira fade out of Graviton Surge or Flux. Um, you can no longer may shift out of Graviton or um, Sigma Flux. Push is quite simple. All right, all push is is you have a robot right here. You have a spawn over here, and you have a spawn over here. What we're trying to do as Team Yellow is push the robot all the way to the enemy team's spawn. And what they're trying to do as Team Black is they're trying to push the, the robot all the way to our spawn. To push the payload, to push the robot, so one person has to be standing next to it. It doesn't heal you. It doesn't go faster if three or four or two people on it. Just one is enough. And as it pushes the payload, it goes very, very slowly. Oh, it's struggling, right? Oh, it's struggling. And then let's say you lose the fight. Oh no, enemy team starts to push it back. Well, the robot, when he's not pushing, he's running to the enemy's pusher thing because what each team has is, is a thing that he has to push. He has our thing that he's pushing and he has their thing he's pushing. So then he, the robot goes really, really fast back. He goes zoom right back to his little pusher thing and then he starts to push the enemy thing and he's going very slowly and then we win the fight and we stop them and then now he's going to run all the way back poor robot zoom right back to where we last pushed our thing and then he starts to push very slowly again so you're basically just walking the robot back and forth trying to win fights if the robot gets all the way to the end you win 
If you get it to like here, it's a checkpoint and you get, instead of spawning over here, you spawn right here. If you know it gets pushed all the way to like, let's say, uh, you know, here, then instead of spawning here, you spawn uh, here. So you get closer spawns, you get rewarded with closer spawns. The end, usually most push maps devolve to whoever can push it the farthest. And then when the time runs out, um, if you're in the lead and the enemy team doesn't touch the robot, you win. Um, it's a lot like payload in that aspect, kind of like a seesaw payload. The only thing I would say is different and interesting is the fact that when the robot's pushing, he goes very slow. When the robot is walking and pushing, like let's say walking back to where we naturally pushed it because we just turned the fight over, then he walks very fast. So interesting to know. Um, and only needs one person, one to stay next to him. There's no benefit to anybody more than one person doing it. Push games are very quick. They're only eight minutes long and they very rarely go longer than eight minutes you very rarely see long overtime fights much faster than koth even usually no no no, no. stall is almost never an issue um obviously later um you know if you push to the very end of the enemy spawn then yes it gets very difficult to cap um but again the, the mode's only eight minutes you know okay we failed to cap it wait three minutes and if you have the further push you're gonna win the interesting thing with with uh with robot is it's very important for example like let's say we're talking about the, the robot pushes here right blue versus pink let's say we push it to here and that's it if the enemy team pushes it to just here like let's say that's like one millimeter further then we lose if we don't push our thing further and the time runs up we lose so it's actually unbelievably important that you do not let the enemy team push it past your record unless you're unless you're like we can't we have to let them because we, we have to regroup or we don't have enough ultimates or like we so something it's actually really important that you make sure that you try and avoid letting them take the lead whatever team has the lead usually has a massive massive advantage because like let's say we have the lead uh just by a little bit on team yellow okay and we're like oh we beat them nice job guys well now the robot has to walk all the way back and a lot of times we'll take another fight here huh oh no we lost and guess what all the way back and then we can might even be able to contest it before they beat our lead so if you have a big lead sometimes you can actually like lose one or two fights before the enemy team can really contest your lead um, so I know that's a little hard to understand. You'll understand it more when you play. What makes this map really interesting is the fact that this area is pretty neutral. But what gets really interesting is actually pushing the robot up to here is actually really scary because there's a really, really oppressive defender's advantage on this high ground up here. So if they're pushing robot, this gets to be really, 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 really ugly. Um, this in, in high ground in general is pretty much meta-defining. Uh, not meta-defining, but like uh, macro-defining in terms of like what teams are going to do to try and um, win. That's going to be basing off of like who can control that high ground, who can maybe avoid that high ground, things like that. Capping is pretty hard in this map like it is in most push maps just based off the fact that like, how close the spawn is. Um, I'm gonna let you guys figure out all the details yourself in terms of the other stuff. Robots right there. A lot of teams will fight for this high ground in this tunnel up here because it's pretty important space. And then the robot starts to push. You have a lot of little goofy rip flank rooms that are really, really scary to deal with. So you gotta be aware of that. There's this little flank in here, which has a mega. Um, you're gonna keep pushing around here. This becomes a really difficult spot for attackers because there are flanks here that defenders can take, right? But then there's also this here. This flank is really rough for attackers to deal with because if you have like a sniper or a soldier or something like this, <coughs> this is a pretty scary site to deal with as well as it gets even harder because as the robot pushes up, you have an inaccessible high ground here from attackers that defenders can just walk onto. Um, so interesting map, lot, a little bit more open sight lines, lots of relevant flanks. Couple of things first. Sojourn, new DPS hero, pretty darn cool. Uh, she looks awesome. She handles really awesome. Uh, from the moment I played her, I played her uh, very, very quickly on Alpha. It was like the first game I played, I got to lock Sojourn. Um, and felt amazing. Uh, regarding the, the overall hero's strength, she's very, very fluid to play. She's a lot of fun. She feels very unique, which is obviously the most important thing, in my opinion, besides like balance and fun to play, is does the hero actually feel unique? Does it feel like a unique experience? Um, and if she feels unique, she feels very fluid. I feel like I'm playing almost a different game, like an Apex Legends or something like that. So the way her shift works, it's, it's vertical mobility, but it's also horizontal mobility. In other words, I could just shift here, and not jump and there you go you move a little faster but i could press spacebar at any time and launch yourself in the air now there's a lot of tech and little things that you could do with this i'm not going to demonstrate any of it because i suck and i feel if i could do it i couldn't do it with this so just take my word for it that she can move the height jump height isn't super super high but it's enough to like access a lot of different high runs um, and this is very important for her as an escape cool uh tool down a uh, cool down but also could be used aggressively okay 
The E, now the E is actually pretty interesting. So when the E first came onto Alpha, I believe it was 300 damage total. I don't know how long it lasts here. Let's actually see. Three, two, five. So it's about five seconds. Um, so it was about 50 DPS. Or it's about, it's about 50 DPS. On Alpha, it was a lot higher. It was around 70 DPS. It was about 65, 70 DPS. It was a total of 300 damage at the same time duration. To the point where if you didn't react to it being placed on you, Instantly, and I'm talking almost legitimately instantly, you would die to it. It was unbelievably broken for a very brief period of time. Alpha, it's now only 200 damage now, which is still very strong. Therefore, you know, on an immobile target, if I E directly, it is going to kill them um, for the full duration. Exactly. And there is a slight slow. The slow isn't as bad as people, because remember people on the Reddit were like, oh no, another CC, oh no. It's not that bad. The slow is actually relatively, it's annoying, but it's not that bad. Um, what is interesting, of course, is that the uh, cooldown of this is, is it's 15 seconds. It's pretty pretty long cooldown. Um, it's okay. Like we'll talk a little bit more about how it's used later, but I can basically tell you backline chokes, things like that. It's okay. It's also okay in duels as well in close range. It's a little hard to land, and it doesn't have an infinite launch. So a lot of people think like it just goes on and on and on. It doesn't. It's a straight, basically, quote unquote, hit scan um, in terms of it doesn't drop. It just goes on into an infinity, and that's about as far as it goes. Okay. Um, then the other thing, and obviously the most important thing, is her weapon, which is projectile. You can kind of see the projectiles. Very fast-moving projectiles. You can see it right there. That, that's a little bit easier to see there. Very fast-moving projectile um, that charges up with the UI in the center of your screen. Now, once it's about, I don't remember the exact number, I think 65, you can now one-shot with a headshot. So let me give you a demonstration here. I believe it's about 65, I think. Okay, wait, that's a bot that actually shoots things. That's not a good demonstration. Okay, so anyway, about 80 damage. It's a one-shot headshot for 200 HP heroes. Um, I believe at full charge, it will one-shot headshot. Uh, I'm almost positive of a 250 HP target. I know it did before. I don't know if it does anymore. It used to be 280 total damage if you got a fully charged headshot. Um, but it takes time to charge and it is hit scan. It's a really, really cool sounding weapon that the right click is really satisfying to land. Um, but it's actually a little bit hard to land. So it used to be where the hitbox of the right click was a little bit bigger. So last thing is her ultimate, which I'm gonna try and demonstrate as best I can with my hand. It just essentially means you automatically charge your right click no matter how much damage you're doing. So watch my right, my middle UI here, ready? Bang, bang, see it's automatically charging. I believe it charges slightly faster if you also shoot. Um, but obviously that's not something that you want to be doing. You just want to be waiting for the next right click and aiming it precisely. So obviously extremely powerful ultimate. Now in terms of play style, I think people have generally got a pretty good idea of it. It's a lot like Soldier 76 in some aspects, um, but not at all in other aspects. So one thing that Sojourn is, is she does, she's really good at taking like these mid range angles a lot like Soldier. So Soldier's not very close up. Soldier's not very good at long range. Soldier's kind of good in the medium ranges. And Sojourn's definitely in that situation too, where it's reasonably difficult to land right click but it's not like you know across a million miles like this is pretty easy to land um but then also you have to keep in mind her weapon is projectile so even though there isn't a fall off to my knowledge um at extreme long ranges it is hard to track with a projectile so you want to be at medium range so medium range uh dps with mobility now here's what i think um brings the hero's uniqueness and it is the vertical mobility not the floor to floor horizontal sprint mobility that the soldier has so the ability to access high grounds immediately there's even a little bit of tech here this is a really cool animation check this one out where you actually shift at the ground watch my shift that right there that's such a cool such a cool animation it's such a cool little thing that you can do um so she's kind of like a more mobile soldier in terms of verticality but less mobile soldier in terms of flanking so she's basically a relatively mobile DPS hero that has options. Um, initially in Alpha, she was played a lot with Brawl comps, like with Zarya, Reaper, Lucio, Moira, because she was just so brokenly strong and she had relatively high mobility. So a Reaper, Lucio, Moira, Tracer can't just instantly kill her because she could run away. As well as the fact, because it was so easy to charge her right click, Tracers actually had to be really scared. You could just pepper Tracer a little bit. Now all of a sudden I'm like 40 charge and I can one shot a Tracer back in the day. That was really, really scary. Basically right now, I can be honest with you, she's not a very strong hero right now. Um, she might be the weakest hero in Overwatch uh, launch since maybe Arissa or Ana. 
So a little bit unfortunate. Um, I don't think you'll see much of her in Overwatch League. Um, we'll see, <clears throat> obviously, what, what, what Blizzard does with betas moving forward, but you're not gonna be seeing much Sojourn. I will say this though, especially in the first little bit of Alpha, her ultimate was unbelievably powerful. Unbelievably powerful, and even now that's harder to land, it is still a very, very powerful ultimate. I'd say probably the top 20% of ultimates in the game, um, maybe top five or so. Can Matrix eat her right click? Yes. <clears throat> I think it's technically uh, a shot. So as far, I am 99.9% .9 sure, yes. Would you play her in a more divey comp? Um, I, I would say probably more divey or brawly. Um, anything that's going to involve poke or... Lo let's just... I don't want to say dive, brawly. Mobile comp, short range comp, long range comp. Not a good long range hero most of the time. She looks like a hero that you'd want a mercy damage boost on 24-7. But actually, a lot of times, she's going to lose to a Hanzo and Stormbow or like random spam across the map. She's definitely going to lose to a Widow, anything that's long range. She's probably going to lose to Ash, And heck, she might even lose to Soldier at long range unless she's landing that right click. So it's definitely a hero that has... Uh, little things that make her look like she's really good at range, but she's actually a little bit more niche at range. She's way better in these more hybrid compositions. Um, but take my word with a grain of salt, because obviously what composition she's played in is something that will, is likely to change at any point in time. She might get buffed. Maybe the players find a crazy niche playstyle with her, and all of a sudden she can work in a composition that she hasn't before. I can just tell you where she's at right now. Her hitbox is actually pretty tough, if I remember correctly. Her hitbox is quite tough. Uh, think uh, Baptiste hitbox. Very, very shifty. Uh, from what I remember, she's actually pretty hard to hit. Does it self-damage? I don't believe so. No. What counters her? Long range. Uh, any any hit scan really long range counters her. And then close range, she's, she's a little bit less good against Tracer than she was before since her nerfs. A lot of heroes that were like so-called hard counters, like Sombra the Ball. Brig to Genji, Brig to Tracer, not really a hard counter. Um, like May, to, May versus Ryan's really annoying to play against. Reaper versus Winston. There's a lot less, there's a lot more leeway um, where those, those hard counters don't really exist. Like even Ryan versus like, let's say spam comps, Ryan versus dive comps. Some of the reworks have made these heroes a lot less counterable. Um, so there's a lot more like flexibility with each hero. Uh, Farah to, I mean Farah obviously. Um, Brig Doom, that's another great example. Sombra Doom. Um, there's a lot fewer hard counters in the game. Um, I, it's not just the CC change, it's also the fact that a lot of the reworks have make, given more heroes, like Reinhardt for example, more options rather than just I stand on ground and swing hammer. There's other things that he can do as well now, which makes it a lot more interesting. I'm going to focus on the next hero here. Let's go ahead and go down the list. Let me just, let me just start from alphabetically here. Diva. Um, we'll try and do, I'll, I might do a tier list later. I will say this though, D.Va is incredibly strong right now. Um, obviously, if you're in bronze and you have divas that just stand at choke and just shoot, shoot at a million miles away and get melted, the diva's not going to feel very strong. Um, but she is significantly harder with somebody who even has an inkling of how to play. Um, the 50 armor is, is it goes a long way. But the big change for her is the three second matrix. So one, two, three. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's actually crazy. Um, they did nerf D.Va, yes, they did nerf D.Va. She was even stronger earlier, so she, yes, they did nerf D.Va. I will say this, that D.Va is very strong, probably the, received the most buffs out of all the tanks besides maybe Reinhardt. Um, it's just crazy, like, how tanky she is and how much she can do, even with the tank nerf, uh, in terms of, like, the actual damage output. Big, 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 big stuff. Okay, so the Doofus rework, I'm sure everybody in this chat has already seen the videos in this, so I'm not gonna go into the details. You guys already know this crap. The only thing I can tell you is that Slam and Uppercut got com combined. There's a lot more mobility. You can reach a lot higher, almost like Winston jump height with it. I think it might actually be Winston jump height. The right click, punch, still same mechanics, nothing different with that. It does, obviously, all of his stuff does less damage, significantly less damage. In fact, if I fully charge a right click punch, barely nothing. And this is where it gets really interesting though. Now, you're not gonna be able to see it here because the training bots don't do enough damage, but if I use my E, which is my blocking animation here, that reduces damage by, I think, 90%. Again, I'll look at the patch notes, um, which means that you block damage, and then once that gets to, I think, about 150 damage, if you do, if somebody does 150 damage to you of any type, beam, bullet, projectile, anything, I think even Reinhardt Hammer Swings, then you get a charge punch. Your fist is going to start glowing, and it doesn't expire until you use it. And now when you punch with the glowy punch, I believe it's like maybe 50 extra damage. Um, but what it does do is it stuns.
Do not shoot Doom when he does this unless he is one HP and or you are prepared to take a nasty punch up against the wall. Um, so what they made Doom is, is essentially a hero who has a lot of engage opportunity, like a dive tank. Um, no comment. Um, but then has also given him a defensive capability with this to preserve his own life, but then also punish you for being foolish enough to shoot him. Um, he creates space exactly like Ball. We'll talk about the overall tank changes and how they do. Um, ultimate's exact same, nothing's different. Primary fire operates exact same. Um, really just a dive tank now. That's pretty much all there is to it. It's actually not that complicated. Okay, so Orisa. Now this might be the most interesting rework of all of them because they've taken a philosophy of making tanks a little bit more proactive and more, maybe a little bit more hands-on to play. And they've really showed their stuff here because you're talking about a hero who's shield, halt, shoot. Right, and I think even with the nerfs to shield the buffs to uh, buffs to fortify that allowed her to play a little bit more involved, she was still a relative. Had a hero that had some passive aspects of her. Um, that's completely gone now. Fortify still operates the same. So notice that she gets extra HP while she's fortifying. Okay. The other thing that she has, everybody's talking about, are the other two abilities: the E, which reflects damage, knocks enemies back, does damage to them. And obviously she doesn't take damage while she's doing that. And she also moves faster. Again, details of this, not 100% sure on the amount of damage. I know it's not particularly high, but you can do wonderful fun things like this. Move fast, move fast. And that works, that's awesome. The other thing that might be even more fun is the javelin, which is a knockback like Doomfist Punch. It does more damage if they hit a wall. It does stun, it does cancel, and it does look really cool. Um, maybe a little underpowered. I'm not sure. It is a little tricky to land, but it's obviously fun. The only other thing that's worth mentioning is the gun, which is operated like Halo guns, like the Alien Covenant guns, on heat. If it overheats, you're screwed. Um, Fortify looks like it reduces heat buildup. You might be right. Yeah, you're definitely right. So Fortify does reduce heat buildup. Good to know. That was exactly the interaction I was looking for. Thank you. Um, the only last thing to say with Orisa here um, is the fact that her ultimate is like Doomfist Slam, but Grav, it's weird. Sucks to man, and then I can release! Ah! And unlike, and, and, and exactly like Doomfist Ultimate, you could just let it fully charge and it will go off on its own. You are fortified when you do the ultimate, so when you're channeling it, you are fortified. Um, my initial take off of this after playing with it a little but a little while in quick play against and seeing more of it, I don't think it's a particularly strong ultimate. Um, it definitely needs to be comboed uh, to get like full power, not to say with an ultimate, but with another cooldown. Do you see Arisa Rush? No, Ryan, Ryan is too good. Ryan is too good at Arisa Rush. If Rush is gonna be played, it's most likely gonna be with a Ryan or a Zarya who will allow the Rush DPS to do more things. Reinhardt, okay. Double fire strike. Keep in mind that they do less damage now. I believe it's 90 damage now because of the reduced tank uh, damage output. Shield is 1,200. Um, oh, the other thing there is all tanks, I believe, have reduced boop. Uh, thing. And then the other thing here, let me see if I can do it right, is you can cancel pen as well as control it. Watch this pen control. Noticeably more pen control. Not massive, but noticeably more pen control. The other thing you could do is you could press the button again and it cancels the pen. So you could go for pen plays and cancel them if you get the opportunity. You could pen an Ana, stop the pen, shield the sleep dart, and then kill her. Um, I'm, Reinhardt might be the most buff tank in the game next to Doom, uh, Doom versus say Probably D.Va or Zarya. D.Va, Zarya, and Reinhardt have all received massive, massive buffs and their flexibility and their overall strength. The big thing with Reinhardt is the fact that he has two Fowry's Fire Strikes, offers a little bit more range. Charge, because you can cancel it, offers a lot more mobility. And his HP increase, which is more so than I think any other tank, allows him to play a lot more solo oriented. He's a lot less constantly demanding healing on oh, one HP perma. He's actually, he can do a lot of crap. Um, also keep in mind, Pin only does like 200 damage now, something like that, 190. Um, but yeah, you have like way, 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 way more options to do with Reinhardt. He kind of play on his own now. He's not as reliant on an off tank to create space. He's not reliant on a hard pocket to create space. He can do stuff just by swinging his hammer, pinning in. Okay, okay I'm good. And then you can go in, you got your duple fire strikes. Like Ryan, I think is another very successful re uh, rework because again, it's a hero that feels like, yes, there are maps like King's Row where Reinhardt is good. And yes, there are maps like Gibraltar where Reinhardt is bad, but there's a lot more options. We talk about the cloudy Reinhardt, clear high ground, clear out space. That type of Reinhardt 
Just got some love with this rework. Winston, the only change worth mentioning. Um, slightly more armor. Bubble HP is a little higher. I believe it was 600 on live. It is now 800. And then he has a right click, which I'm sure everybody has already seen by now. You click and hold right click. And I believe it is projectile. But I'm not 100% sure. You might want to test it out. But obviously the fully charged damage. Ah! It's not much. It's like 50 damage. But it's okay. My biggest complaint with the right click, and it is the complaint from most of the pros, is that the right click costs ammo. So look at my ammo in the bottom right. 20 ammo. That's kind of annoying. Um, so I, I would prefer it a lot more if they actually had the right click charge like total of five ammo or maybe no ammo at all. Um, that way it becomes a situation where you're not punished for using it and then having to reload because you did a whopping 40 damage and you missed the shot and then you're diving and you already have only 80 ammo. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is annoying. So it's a cool ability. I think it actually is really nice. Adds a little bit of mechanics, a lot, a little bit of flexibility. And again, more flexibility because we have things that Winston is weak at. Well, he's a little less weak at. He's got a little bit of range, right? Um, but obviously the, the ammo kind of sucks. So I'm hoping that they fix that. Everything else is exactly the same with Winston. Nothing has changed. Ball, nothing has changed. I believe there's been some UI changes. Um, yeah, you see here, this tells you how many people you're close to to get your shield generate for your shields on your E. And then I believe there's also a notification on when you can slam. So watch my UI carefully. Can you see that right in the middle there? See that right in the middle, that little orange arrow? That's when I can slam. Outside of that, nothing's changed. Same hero, he's totally fine, nothing crazy. Zarya, one of the three tanks that I think received massive buffs in Overwatch 2. The massive buff is that you can do this. Everybody should know this already, but if you, in case you missed it, bubble one. And bubble two. There's a slight cooldown be before I can bubble the same person again. So in other words, I can't just bubble two in a row without, without you know, just chain perfectly. So if I bubble myself, and it's the same for self bubble too. So if I bubble myself once, watch carefully. I'm smashing my shift. There's one smash, smash, smash. Come on, bubble, 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 bubble. Oh, you can bubble yourself fast. <gasps> Chat, that's worth noting. You can bubble yourself twice in a row, but you cannot bubble somebody else twice in a row. You can bubble them twice in a row, but you have to wait about a second or so. But this is a massive buff. Again, it's the flexibility, right? The problem with Zarya is bubble was an awesomely powerful cooldown, but you only had one. And you had self bubble. And playing against dive, playing against spam, you'd be like, oh, man, I wish I could be helping these guys. Man, I wish I could, and you, and you can only bubble an angle, a DPS, a backliner once. Now you can do it twice. Or you can play very aggressive yourself and bubble yourself twice. Um, the other thing, little minor thing, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it with my thumb, but you can, yeah. So there is slightly more mobility with right click jump. So with before, you could do all sorts of kind of like goofy things with right click jump. Now you can get even higher with right click jump. You see that? Just a little higher. Um, so that's worth noting. It's not exactly a mobility buff, but eh, eh, you know, every little bit counts. So again, you have a hero that has a lot less, a lot fewer hard counters, a lot more flexibility with how she plays. Is there a delay between throwing out bubbles on two different targets? I believe not. You can do it instantly, in fact. So I can bubble myself and somebody else at the same time, or I can bubble two different targets instantly. Bastion, another successful rework, I think. Um, maybe there's some work left to be done, but I think overall, pretty good. He's not very strong, but he's pretty interesting. And he's gonna be actually, think, pretty strong in lower ranks because his shift is the exact same in terms of changing form, but you can now move. Three, two, one, see the counter on the left? and then I lose it. And then I get it again at 12 seconds. So it's actually crazy. He cannot heal, but he can move while in Bastion, uh, Bastion uh, a turret form. This gun is hit scan, and it shoots like burst. One, two, three, four, five, it's semi-automatic. Bang, 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 bang. If you can land your shots, it does an unbelievable amount of damage. Let me show this right here. Right, obviously all headshots, obviously hard to land, but it's, a, it's an option. It's a lot of damage. His sticky grenade, with a little bit of a boop. I believe you can actually sticky grenade bounce yourself. Um, I, I, I'm terrible at this kind of stuff. I've actually never even tried this, so let's actually see. Yeah, so you can kind of sticky grenade yourself and launch yourself. Uh, but the big change is obviously the fact that he can move while doing this. So you have bursts of huge value, and you can exit it if you want to. Um, so I think the Bastion rework um, was largely successful. Um, I think it made him definitely more interesting to play, more engaging, um, less AFK in the brain, less cheese. Um, 
definitely way more engaging. Successful rework. I'm going to show you his ultimate, which might be the more cheese aspect of the skin. And this is why when Karku says that this guy's like D tier, I think, um, in lower ranks, I had to laugh because this ultimate is going to be absolutely busted in lower ranks. Two, three. You're, like Doomfist Ultimate, you're required to react to this and get kills. I can tell you playing up against, when I was in Overwatch 2 Alpha, and I was playing against lower rank players, um, like Plats, Diamonds even, I'm getting like two kills every Bastion Ultimate. It's really, really hard to mess that up. Um, the only thing that can really counter is like Zarya Bubbles, things like that. You know, if you can shield off the center or avoid the center, but it, it's, it's a good ult, it does damage. Cassidy, nothing really to say outside of his grenade instead of flashing is a sticky bomb. Watch carefully. AoE damage, right? Has a fall off center. Now this is where it gets interesting though. Watch if I aim just slightly closer to my target. Like let's just say just off the hitbox. So right to them. And I think it does about 140 damage. I think it's 140 damage. So headshot plus sticky and they're dead. Or a body shot plus sticky and they're dead. The only other change worth mentioning is that while he's high nooning, I believe he takes 30 or 40% less damage. So he's harder to kill while he's high nooning. He's not just a sitting duck. Um, but it does take longer to charge, if I remember correctly. So, worth noting. Sombra, okay, Sombra's the one that deserves looking at. Everybody nothing's changed here, nothing's changed here. What has changed is this. The hack takes a little while to go off. It used to be a lot shorter on the early stage of Alpha, and Sombra was unbelievably broken in early stages of Alpha. One of the top, like, not, strong as, not as strong as Sojourn, but, uh, but definitely up there. Um, hack, you stay in stealth. Your people, uh, your teammates can see them through walls, not just you, as long as there's hacked. I think it's like 10 seconds, something like that. Um, and they take 30% or 40% more damage. I don't know the exact number, but for example, watch this. Right? As opposed to slightly slower. Um, so it makes that target more vulnerable to your damage. Um, as well as it only, okay, listen, really, 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 really important. Hacking only removes their abilities for one second. EMP doesn't matter. One second. Really, really nice quality of life change for people that are annoyed at playing against Sombra. There's other things about her that are a little bit frustrating, but I think overall Sombra is definitely a little less frustrating to play against. Even as a Zen player, you get hacked, you get, oh, it's annoying, yes, but it's better than being, uh, you know, hacked permanently. Um, the only other thing to say is that EMP is a flat damage on anybody that gets hit by the EMP. I believe it's 25 or 30 percent damage. Um, on anybody who gets EMP'd. So instead of them being just hacked, they get hacked for one second, and then they lose their HP. So watch this. HP, full. There you go. About 30, 40%. Tracer fall off was nerfed. So you might not notice this much, but this is a really, really big deal for tracer damage. So watch tracer damage at this range. About 10 meters here. Okay, barely got it with a kill. Um, so they just basically nerfed how much damage that she does at range and uh, mid ranges. So overall, Tracer nerf for sure. Um, no, it wasn't even fall off. I think it was just damage per pistol. Brig Bash no longer stuns, but does now content go back to 50 damage. So watch this. This doesn't stun, but 50 damage, um, which is definitely a nerf. Um, but she is still playable in some circumstances, in some comps. A lot of people are putting her in F tier. That's just a cap. She's not F tier. She's just a little bit different. She functions still exactly the same though. Lucio gets ult a little faster, if I remember correctly. There's some Zen UI changes you can check out. Like for example, there's Harmony in the bottom left, there's Discord in the bottom right. I think there's been some Mercy UI changes as well. Um, I pray that they actually rework Moira um, because Moira has also not been touched. So obviously here, I think along with Roadhog that needs some love, needs some checking out, some adjustments, um, but yeah, we will see.